الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد continuing on the seventh lesson in the book اصول السنه by Imam Ahl Sunnah Ahmed ibn Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala and with some of the benefits from Shaykh Abayd or Jabri hafizahullah ta'ala he mentioned some great benefits with regards to some of the points we already covered so I wanted to read just a couple of the benefits the Shaykh mentioned with regards to bid'ah and the part where uh, Imam Ahmed said wa tark al-bid'ah وكل بدعة هي ضلالة وترك الخصومات وجلوس مع أصحاب الأهواء. so Imam Ahmed he said, رحمه الله تعالى, he said in leaving innovation and every innovation leads to misguidance and leaving debating, you know debating and arguing and controversial issues and sitting with the people of desires. Sheikh Ubaid Hafidhullah Ta'ala mentioned after explaining about bid'ah, he said, وَتَرْكُ bidah," And he said, لِمَاذَا? He said, why? He said, الْبِدَعَ قَدْ يَرَاهَا الْجَاهِلْ أَوْ مَنْ خُفِيَ عَلَيْهِ الْأَمْرِ أَنَّهَا حَسَنَ كَالْإِحْتِفَالِ بِالْمَوْلِدِ لَكِنَ الْمُسْلِمْ يَجِبُ أَنْ يَكُونَ مُحْكَمًا أو مُحْكُومًا بِحُكْمِ شَرْعِ La bi rai. This is a very beneficial point the Shaykh said, Hafidullah Ta'ala. He said regarding the statement where Imam Ahmed said and leaving bid'ah. He said, and why? He said, because bid'ah or innovation that a person who's ignorant could believe either that they're ignorant or that that this issue is um, deceiving for them. They could they they could perhaps believe that this is something righteous or something good. Similar, uh, for example, like the celebrating of the Prophet ﷺ's birthday. Obviously the people who celebrate the birthday of the Prophet ﷺ, they believe that they're coming closer to Allah. Nobody, I don't believe, does this action wanting to do harm wanting to do, uh, uh, you know, they believe that they're doing something good, that they're serving the religion, that they're having a Islamic party, an Islamic gathering to celebrate and worship their Lord and to celebrate the Prophet who was the best of mankind, alayhi salatu wasalam. So they believe they're doing good, but usually this is because of ignorance. So they believe they're doing good. Maybe they have sincerity, but as we mentioned before, lam yuwaffaq as-sunnah. They didn't do something which was in accordance with the sunnah. They had sincerity, but no sunnah. And those are one of the ways in which uh, a person goes astray and that their ibadah is not accepted. So this is a bid'ah. And then the sheikh said, however, a Muslim, it is an obligation upon a Muslim to do those things to judge by the Sharia, to make their judgments and their deeds in their life based upon the judgments of the Sharia, the rulings of the Sharia, and not based upon their opinion. So that was a very important thing. And this is all, the, the Salaf used to write books about them uh, ahla uh, kalam, or them ahla rai, you know, books about the sinfulness and the the, the, dis, the unpraiseworthiness of the people of Kalam, you know, of philosophy and, you know, of intellectual discourse who tried to, uh, you know, have discourse which is outside of the Sharia to debate the Sharia or what have you. And those people of, of opinions and so forth. Because the Sharia, we are governed by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and as we mentioned the four types of evidence that is Quran and Sunnah and Ijma, you know the consensus and the first consensus is the consensus of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een they form, they form the asl of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah they're the asl of the Jama'ah is the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and then the fourth level uh, or the fourth type of evidence in the Sharia is Qiyas is 
uh, making analogy, but it has to be qiyas as sahiha Qiyas as sahih meaning that it is sound qiyas, qiyas, which is an analogy, which is a permissible permissible analogy, which is sound, because they share a similar illa between the two things that are being compared, but not based on desires, not based on qiyas al-fasid, as we mentioned uh, prior to this uh, sitting. And then the shaykh said, Hafizullah Ta'ala, regarding this, he mentioned a very important uh, qa'idah here. This is very important that we need to take into our, uh, uh, our understanding of Islam. These are our principles which help us to understand in general. They give us a scale to measure our deeds and what we see with regards to our worship and with regards to how we interact with one another. This qa'idah is, the Sheikh mentions, he said, وَلِهَذَا قَرَرَ أَئِمَّتَنَا أَنَّ الْأَصْلَ فِي الْعِبَادَاتِ الْحَذَرِ he said in the, the ulama, our, our scholars, meaning the scholars of Ahl sunnah they uh, continuously mention this principle that the origin of worship is al-hadr, yani al-mana, illa bin nas, is that it is prohibited unless there's a text to support it. Again, the origin of any type of worship related to Islam is that it's prohibited unless there's a text from the Qur'an or the Sunnah to substantiate that that's worship. That is imperative. If we understand that and practice that, that will keep us away from a lot of bid'ah. For example, if we look at the example we gave, Ittifal al mawlid If we say that the asl, the origin of, of worship, is that it's prohibited unless there's a text. If we look at the mawlid and we put it on the scale with the Sharia, we'll find that we don't have a Qur'anic text to support it. And we don't have something from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, to support it. Matter of fact, we have hadith, a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that one of the hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said, do not be extreme and exaggerate my, my status like the Christians did with Jesus والسلام, This is a hadith of the Prophet والسلام, directly saying, do not worship the Prophet, do not exaggerate his status والسلام, better than what he والسلام, was and higher than he was والسلام, which were ordered to follow his sunnah, not worship him and not celebrate his birthday. So we don't have anything from the Quran, we don't have anything from the sunnah, so that means we don't have a nas. So if the asl, if the origin is, if we do not have a nas for it, that we should leave that ibadah, that it is not ibadah, then that, we can put that on the scale and say, therefore, the mawlid is not ibadah. It is not a type of worship. It is not something from the sharia. Then the shaykh went on to say, Wal asl fi adat, adat wal mu'amalat al ibaha illa bi nas. Faman arada an ya'marana bi ibadah, وَيَدْعُونَ إِلَى عِبَادَةِ لَمْ تُكُنْ مَعْرُوفَ لَدَيْنَا طَلَبْنَاهُ بِدَلِيلٍ So this is beautiful. Then the Shaykh said, Hafidh Allah Ta'ala, He said, and the origin for uh, uh, the other things aside from ibadah, meaning your, your social interactions, buying and selling and so forth, is that it's permissible. So food, drink, uh, buying and selling, all of those are, are lawful transactions except where there's a text from the Qur'an or there's a text from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that prohibits it. So then, for example, we know we can't eat pork. We can't eat pork, why? Because we have a Qur'anic text that says pork is uh, impermissible for us to, to eat. Or we know we cannot drink alcohol. Why? Because the Quran says, and the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said we cannot uh, drink uh, alcohol and intoxicants. Alayhi salatu wasalam. So, then the Shaykh said, so if you want to know that if someone wants to order us with a type of worship, or introduce a type of worship to us, a new type of worship. And it is not something which is known to us. Then we will ask them for evidence from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. That is so important. 
That is so important. That's the, these principles. This right here can save you from a lot of bid'ah. And if, if the Muslims in general just understand this qaida and practice this, it, it will protect you in your religion. So if someone brings something strange you've never heard of related to worship and they start doing, they say, hey, we pray with the lights out, for example, and we say Allah 1,000 times until, you know, our tongue just becomes so moist that spit starts coming out of our mouths. And, or we spin around and, and, and say Allah, 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 because it gives us such a spiritual feeling. We feel dizzy and lightheaded and it just brings us closer to Allah. Then you would have to ask them. Is there uh, evidence from that, from the Qur'an and the Sunnah? And if they start saying, well, you know, my, my Shaykh said this, my Imam said this, Wali Fulan from the Salihin said this, then you know, leave them and leave their bid'ah. As Imam Ahmed said, Turk uh, uh, wa He said, Every bid'ah, every innovation is misguidance and leaving debating or controversy in the religion and leaving sitting with the people of desires. Because then know for sure that person is either ignorant or they are a person from desires or both. And if they cannot give you some evidence for what they're doing related to worship and they're doing it active and, and they're encouraging you to do it, then you, you need to ask them for evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. And those are just some of the benefits I wanted to backtrack that the Sheikh mentioned that I thought were very beneficial for us and that will help us to be protected from many of the bid'ah that Ahl al-Bid'ah uh, spreads in this day and age and throughout the th throughout the history in Islam that we've seen the people of desires rear their heads and spread new innovations in the religion and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from bid'ah and protect us from dalal and protect us from our own shibahad and our own sinfulness wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam